Hi there, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to finally be doing my 500 subscriber Q&A. So go ahead and grab your cup of coffee and let's get into it. jumping right into it I thought we could go ahead and just get started I went ahead and I put a little you know the little Q&A box on one of my Instagram stories screenshotted all of them but then since I videotape on my phone went ahead and wrote them down so of course my notes are here as always but let's go ahead and jump in so my first question was how did you meet your husband so <laughs> this is my favorite story to tell am I even recording yes okay we're good <laughs> um the short of it is that we met through a mutual friend, but the long of it is we met through a prank call. He was at the School of Worship out here in California, and an old friend of mine was there as well. I had never met my husband. We'll call him Jack. <laughs> I had never met my husband, Jack, but he was at the School of Worship, and he quickly became friends with this old friend of mine. And this old friend would always prank call myself and another friend. So I was on the list, they were making prank calls that night and it was my husband's phone, Jack's, that they were using so that I wouldn't recognize the number. So I get this call at like midnight, right before Easter. And it's funny, I always remembered that it was right before Easter because the church that I grew up in, my dad's church, my dad's a pastor, we always have done a sunrise service. So I had to be up the next morning at about two or 3 a.m. and I got this call at around midnight um, of this voice saying like, hello, this is Jeff Anderson, you've won, or this is Jeff Anderson with the Coca-Cola Company, and you've won the Dr. Pepper Scholarship. And it was just this running joke, because when I was in high school, I was absolutely obsessed with Dr. Pepper. I've written research papers on them. <laughs> so I knew off the bat that it was a prank call, one, because of the time, and two, because Coca-Cola doesn't own Dr. Pepper, Snapple does. And so immediately, I just called it, like, okay, this is a prank call, like, where is he? Where's my friend Marco? And Jack just completely lost it. He thought it was hilarious that I called him on it. Well, he was the biggest flirt I have ever encountered. He would not stop flirting and it was just absolutely adorable. Played hard to get for a month, fasted on it, prayed on it. My microwave broke to spell out his name. I have picture proof, but I'm not gonna do that because then it reveals his name. <laughs> And that was that. We started talking. We were just absolute best friends. We're still best friends. He's my husband. And that was that. We're married now. We were long distance for the entire relationship up until like a few months before we got married. <laughs> the Lord works in mysterious ways, y'all. The second question, have I always been feminine? And if not, how did I get started on this journey? So I've always been a very naturally feminine person like that's just always been my personality type um growing up at that church that i grew up in um my running nickname from as early as i can remember was i was lady s like i just my name is serenity and everybody called me lady s and so <laughs> i've always been feminine but definitely growing up that was something that i rejected more because again society culturally it's just kind of pushed on you to be this like go-getter kind of somewhat masculine woman to be the tough girl and I'm the daughter of missionaries, and so I very much was always one who had my feet in the ground, like, you know what I mean, always getting my hands dirty. I grew up with a brother and all of his brothers, or all of his best friends who became like my brothers and all of that. But when I moved out here to California, it was definitely, you know, this moment of, okay, who am I? <laughs> I've just left this whole world that I knew of being a missionary child in you know the inner city of Miami as well as like you know traveling to these different countries for missions all the time and just this whole thing as well as like growing up in the south it was this whole world that I left behind and then I came out here to suburban California and it was a complete 180 and so I really had to kind of figure out who I am and I'll never forget it's gonna sound so silly but I was sitting on my bed, at, we were staying at this point with my in-laws and I was watching The Crown on Netflix. And I had this moment of like, how did you forget who you are? You're a queen. <laughs> You've always been a queen, start remembering it, start living it again. And it sounds so silly and superficial, but that for me was really this moment when everything clicked. And I was like, oh yeah, I am. I'm a daughter of the king, that makes me a princess. Like, yes, of course, like how did I forget this? And so, that really is what got me started on this journey, was just remembering like, duh, I'm a daughter of 
the king. I'm, I'm a princess. I'm a queen. Like what, how did I forget this? <laughs> and so that's what got me started on the journey was watching the crown. How do I keep things fresh in marriage? I love that question. Um, I'm a big believer in the fact that you change every day as a person. And so the person that you married is going to also be changing every day as a person. But as long as those core values stay the same, like that's really your grounding is, or it should be, Lord willing, is the Lord. Like a cord of three strands is not easily broken. And with him as the glue, as your grounding, as your foundation in marriage, then keeping things fresh to me, I'll say honestly, like, yeah, in some seasons it can be hard, but in most seasons it stays relatively easy for us because our foundation is the Lord. Step beyond that, we're best friends. Like he truly is my best friend. And then another step further, as he, I'm changing every day, so is he. So every day I get to kind of learn and discover more about this person who I live with as our seasons of life change. And it's with this incredible dynamic of seasons change, we're changing, but we're best friends. And so the seasons that we're going through are we're going through them together. So when we made this drastic move and it was this culture shock for me coming from, you know, what I described before, this strange, I mean, honestly, like somewhat oxymoronic life that I led before to now West Coast, suburban, like just completely different. This is his hometown where we live now, but he also saw that change and he went through that change. He saw and lived in the world that I came from for a few years and then went through that culture shock with me. He went through his own culture shock when he was living in Miami with me. So that's really what keeps it fresh for me. It's just the doing life together. It's doing life together, allowing the seasons to change, sticking to each other with that, keeping the Lord at the center, but then also remembering he's changing every day and I get to discover these new elements of him every day. I hope that answered that question. Um, the next question was, favorite preppy brands? I love this question. <laughs> Gap. I love the Gap. Like, I'm pretty sure what I'm wearing right now is from the Gap. J. Crew, obviously. Old Navy. I just love, I love the classics more than even preppy. I love the classics, but then also Kill James Patrick. KJP is where it's at. Love them. Vineyard Vines. Lily Pulitzer. How did I forget Lily Pulitzer? But am I still going? Something beeped. Okay. But yeah, I mean, the staples. But really Lily Pulitzer. And the more I think about it, always Lily. <laughs> what is my favorite meal or food to cook? That is a hard one. Um, this time of year, I really love cooking soups. So something I've learned to cook since marrying my Mexican Italian husband is pozole and I absolutely love it as well as one of my favorite things to cook growing up was always Brunswick stew um, If you don't know what that is google it. It is just an old southern recipe. It's really good grew up on it um, My dad would make it for me every year for my birthday. So that's still my favorite food this time of year I'm an October baby So I'm actually gonna be cooking that soon <laughs> Besides that I love making there's this one macaroni casserole it's just the best like hearty thick you know the good kind of mac and cheese that when you cut into it it stands up love that i'll link that recipe down below um what is my favorite book i it's easier for me to say favorite authors i'll put it that way i love anything by c.s lewis and i've read pretty much every book by jean stratton porter she i love her writing her books are kind of hard to track down. She's the one who wrote um, A Girl of the Limberlost. That's one of my favorites of hers, as well as Laddie. That was the first book of hers that I read. And I'm trying to get my mom to send all of them out from Florida because I have this whole collection of all of her books that are all about 100 years old now, like the physical copies are, but they're my treasures. I mean, I read them nonstop from like middle school through high school. So yes, anything by C.S. Lewis or Jean Stratton Porter. Um, what else? What do I love and admire most about my husband? Two things immediately come to mind. The first is his level of, I guess you could say initiative. Like when we met, he was straight up flirtatious, <laughs> which I love because he's upfront. He's like within, I kid you not, week two, we hadn't even met in person yet. We weren't even dating yet. He just told me off the bat, I'm going to date you. 
And if I date you, I'm going to marry you. And that's where we are. So I love that his level of taking initiative as well as his level of honor. He will never do something no matter what. He will not cross his own level of integrity. That line will never be breached. There's nothing that can make him do it. It is just his level of integrity is so solid and that's so rare to find. So those are the two things I love and admire most about him. If I'm checking, it's because I wanna make sure I'm still filming. Um, how do you deal with and overcome homemaking laziness? So I actually made a video about that. I will link it in the cards below or above. I say below as I'm pointing up. I will link it in the cards. Um, but also something that's helped me a lot recently is the Fly Lady app. That for me has really helped me just stay on top of things, keep myself accountable. So that's a really good one as well as the Fly Lady Pro app and that's free. A close up and story of my wedding rings. Okay, so here are them. I wanna see if you can see them. Can you see them? These are them. I have my engagement band at the top here and then my wedding ring right below it. So the story of those was I was actually on a six month um, missions trip in India at the time. I didn't spend the whole six months in India. I did YWAM. So I was on outreach in India at the time when it really was just like, and my husband and I are going to get married. Like we had gotten the approval from our parents because I was 19 at the time. And that moment, it was, I want to say it was February 2nd, is still the time that I really remember is like, that's when we got engaged. We have another date that I wish I remembered, March something, <laughs> of when we actually like got engaged and he gave me the ring, but I picked out the ring online on Etsy in February. And I'll never forget that because I was staying, it was actually in Nepal at the time. And I ran in, there was this kid in the group who was like my big brother. And I ran in and I was like, Chris, I think I'm engaged. And he picked me up and gave me this big hug and it was super sweet. And I joked that he was one of my bridesmaids at the wedding. He was actually one of the groomsmen. Um, he and my husband got along really well. But yeah, so I picked it out then. But the story of it is mine, both my engagement ring and my wedding band look like tree branches. And then my husband's looks like a tree stump. So the idea is similar to that of how the Bible says, I am the vine and you are the branches. I love that also in relation to how, you know, we are with him. He is the vine of our marriage and we are the branches. But also, if you think about it in terms of how the relationship between a husband and wife is supposed to respect that of Christ, or is supposed to reflect that of Christ in the church, then I love that as well. of like my husband being the vine and I'm his branch, but that's that. Um, my top beauty tips, figure out what works for you and play into it. What features do you love and accentuate those? So for me, I love the shape of my lips. <laughs> Feels weird to say, but I do. I love the shape of my lips and I love my eye color. So those are really what I play into is accentuating my eye color through the colors I use in eyeshadow. And I like to slightly overline my lips and accentuate those. Those are my top beauty tips though, so figure out what works for you, figure out what you like about your face and really focus on that. Favorite songs right now, Belly, I think it is that. Yeah, Belly of the Deepest Love is what it's called by Towers, I believe. Yes, Belly of the Deepest Love by Towers is my favorite song right now. Advice on staying grounded in your faith despite being young, quiet time. You have to be reading your Bible every day. That is something where I'm not saying it to be like legalistic, waving your finger at you, but I am a firm believer of you can't expect the Lord to speak to you if you're not going to be in his word, because then it's very easy to get what you think is the Lord speaking to you twisted and confused. I've done that many more times than I would like to admit. And it was always during a season when perhaps I wasn't as grounded in the word as I should have been. So that really is it. It's just be reading the word every day. Um, let me grab my things. I have them right here. I will show you my quiet time setup right now. I'm a big believer in journaling. Am I still recording? Yes, I'm a big believer in journaling while you read the word. So I have my Bible. I love the HCSB translation of the Bible, the Holman Christian Standard Version. Um, in the back of mine over here, it has some reading plans. So I had been doing a one year reading plan, but after a little bit that gets, um, like you get used to the plan. I had been doing it for years. So I switched to, they have a three year 
reading plan. So you can see, I haven't read today, but I'm going to. <laughs> um, I've been reading in the evening. So it gives you just a little bit of what to read each day. Today I'm going to be reading 1 Kings 7 verses 1 through 26. And like I said, I like to journal. I write down my prayers. I just find that for me, it's much more, um, it feels like much more of an excavation. Like I truly get more out of myself. And then when it's on paper, it feels like it's done. And I just, for me, that helps. And I've noticed that when I don't do that, my quiet time is lacking. Like it's not, I almost want to say it's not as effective. I don't feel as in tune with the Lord because I'm not going as deep within myself. I'm just like, okay, little verse of the day done as opposed to really like, this is what I'm feeling right now. This is what I'm dealing with. Laying that at his feet and then allowing his word to speak to me as I read it. Now, the other thing I've been loving is John Eldridge's restoration year. This is just a little daily devotional. I will read you his for the day. Why not? So today's would be November 10th. That's the day I'm filming this. A will of your own. And John Eldridge at the top quotes Joshua 24, verse 15, the New Living Translation. If you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. And it says, God enables you to love. He gives you the greatest treasure in all creation, a heart. But just, to, just as you have lost your wonder at the world around you, you've forgotten what a treasure your heart is. All of the happiness you've ever known and all of the happiness you hope to find is unreachable without a heart. You could not live or love or laugh or cry had God not given you a heart. And with that heart comes something that just staggers me. God gives you the freedom to reject him. He gives you a will of your own. Good grief, why? He knows what a free-willed creature can do. He has already suffered one massive betrayal in the rebellion of the angels. He knows how we will use our freedom, what misery and suffering, what hell will be unleashed on earth because of our choices. Why? Is he out of his mind? The answer is as simple and staggering as this. If you want a world where love is real, you must allow each person the freedom to choose. And then at the bottom he writes, we do forget what a treasure our hearts are. How are you taking care of your heart this week? It's certainly food for thought, food for prayer. So I like to read this before I journal, journal what it stirs up in me, and then go back to his word. And that is my biggest tip for how to keep your faith grounded despite being young, is if you keep your quiet times grounded, if you keep your time with the Lord sacred, then that will keep you grounded. It's the same as with marriage. If I just don't make time to chat with my husband every day, every week, I mean, well, especially every day, but you get what I'm saying. Can I really say we have a marriage? I mean, that's when marriages really start to suffer is when you just get so busy that you're not taking time for each other. And our relationship with the Lord, our faith is the exact same way. So you need to be making time every day, setting aside time to be with him. Anyways, that is my 500 subscriber Q&A. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope to see you guys back here for another video. Bye.